Alright guys, T2RX6 here, back for the first review of 2015, so welcome to the new style reviews. Put your hoverboards down and let's actually take a look at this guy. This is MP22 Ultra Magnus, one that I've been anticipating and has been a cause of a lot of controversy for quite a while. Um, before we take a big look at him, let's look at his accessories. He comes with a uh, little mush face Daniel and a mush face Spike. Which makes us wonder, which one is the exosuit from Bumblebee? I don't know, it's so hard to tell. Notably, the exosuit has a way bigger head. So I'm going to keep on calling him Spaniel, as the mutant, uh, something that can only survive in an exosuit, uh, that utilizes the DNA of Daniel and Spike. So that's Spaniel still. Uh, he comes with some nifty little matrix holding hands here we'll get to them later and he comes with a screaming face so that's pretty awesome I guess I don't really care for it and of course he has a gun and he does hold it just nicely so let's look at the toy the truck of course is the white truck here red bumper the red actually in person is less jarring than it was in the pictures for me I don't mind it so much but I'm sure that uh, repro labels will make a chrome bumper for those who prefer the chrome um, nice size here on the actual truck very good detailing the trailer it's kind of where it falls apart a little for me and this guy has been kind of like a mixed uh, review for me because I really like him but there's absolutely no paintwork on the trailer which I get it it's G1 cartoon but it almost feels unfinished and I wish that they had taken a couple extra cents and maybe thrown us a sticker sheet so those that don't want any detailing wouldn't have to put it on but you know maybe like some of these triangles would give us like a little red pop of color or uh, maybe like some tail lights or something like that because you just come around and it's so ordinary looking um, the doors of course do come down if you do want them to come down so yeah let's uh take a look here and one thing that I do like about this guy is there's a little lever underneath and right here and you push it and it actually will release the truck from the trailer a really nice touch Ultra Magnus's head showing here and uh, this feature I actually exploit quite a bit on here because um, when we go from his robot mode to his vehicle mode uh, the way that these wheels fold out it's a whole lot less scary if you pop the truck off so I'll show you that when we get there when we take this now we can open this on up and you can see we have the little compartment here uh, where Spike and Daniel can sit. Uh, they basically, when you have them in the sitting position, you've got that big of a gap and that little peg there will go in between their legs to secure them in position. It's a little bit hard to do so I'm not going to do it on camera but I do have pictures of it. Before we get on to the size comparison, some things I wanted to point out uh, that I'm not a huge fan of. Like these little pieces here are supposed to clip together and no matter how much pressure I put, they always come apart. Um, I don't know, that can probably be solved with some like floor polish or something, but it is a kind of minor little gripe nonetheless. Same thing goes for these pegs right here that plug onto these. Um, you can see the plastic is definitely making contact. But when I secure it closed, it, it never really actually stays. They're not secured in any meaningful way. Which sometimes will leave this looking a little bit awkward as it sits out like this. and um, A minor thing, but something that just does kind of get to me just a tiny little bit. With respect to the missile launchers here, as far as I see, they don't come off. But they do have a great range of articulation such that if you really want to, you can take these guys flip them all around and then just have them pegged on the front like you could with the original Ultra Magnus. Uh, with respect to the trailer, I noticed that the wheel here bumps the trailer, but if you kind of give it just a little extra push here to help guide it, you'll go ahead and get a nice range of motion out of the cab of the truck. Of course, Spike and Daniel are too big to fit in Hot Rod. Well, usually, if you actually push Hot Rod's foot down here a little, um, and be careful you don't pop your Daniel's leg off there which I suppose if you wanted to you could take the leg off and then fit him in there but you can kinda push this which will make Hot Rod not quite sit correctly and kinda lie him down here and you could close this on up with Daniel in there if you really want to be careful though because one of the problems I've been facing is that the plastic on my Hot Rod has finally given way from opening the canopy too much. 
That's unfortunate. So getting on to some comparisons, we'll start with the most ridiculous. Here is the Masterpiece Hot Rod in his vehicle mode. This just doesn't work at all for me. As you would expect, he looks great with the MP cars, all four of which can fit onto his trailer. And he's a touch shorter than MP10. Uh, the trucks overall are the same size, but this part is a little bit more bulky on MP10, obviously because of the robot legs. But the one that I'm most concerned about is, of course, the other Prime, which I think he looks amazing next to. So before we get to the final size comparison, I want to qualify a statement you're going to hear me make. When I say that this doesn't look as good, it has nothing to do with G1. It has everything to do with the picking out of the details. This guy is G1 to a fault. Um, and let's bring out who we're talking about here. And it's Citizen Stack. And props to Takara for not having a floppy cab and having actual appropriate size gas canisters. But this is what I'm talking about when I say Ultra Magnus doesn't look as good. Yes, he is G1. Whether you like the styling of Stack or not, that's a different story. But look, all these little tiny red details here break up this just almost obnoxious amount of blue and I get it that's the character but you can't tell me that putting some red here or maybe on some of these panels or down here or some tail lights or down here or on the back wouldn't actually make this figure just stand out and in that regard I do give Citizen Stack here the advantage the better paint really does bring out details of the figure that I wish were present in this one there's Citizen Stack and Ultra Magnus. Very similar in size. Citizen Stack is just a tiny bit shorter in the trailer than Ultra Magnus. You probably could cram on four Masterpiece cars if you really tried with this one. But uh, he comfortably holds two, I guess. So, there you go. Either way, neither one of these Ultra Magnuses are a terrible representation of his vehicle mode. Really, if you're going to start comparing which one you want to buy, the truck mode's not really where you want to start. So let's talk Ultra Magnus in his robot mode. When he's standing by himself here, he doesn't bother me very much. Uh, the top really doesn't look bad because there's so much color at the top that it breaks everything up. There's no detailing in these stack pieces, but that's okay. Um, I can accept them. I wouldn't have minded some uh, like ridges in there, but it's not too big of a deal. When we get down to the waist and knees though, this is where I find the toy really plain. And this is again, the detailing that Citizen Stack had with all this red, like little red details, really would have broken up this just big splotch of color we have here. I'm sure Repro Labels will take care of it, but as it stands this is a more expensive toy than Stack. And from a masterpiece that does disappoint me a little bit. When we come to his articulation here, it's a little bit odd, and I was pretty surprised about this. So when it comes to the arm, we get a full 360. Uh, this piece rotates out, and what looks like the same type of mechanism that MP10 has, like it should slide out, is there, but it doesn't slide out, so our side-to-side -side movement of the arm is like that. And that's not really a great range of motion on there. Uh, down to the elbow, we do have a swivel, and then your regular ratcheted 90 degree elbow joint. It's nice ratchets as you can see. The head is on the same type of mechanism as MP10. The swivel and the swivel. Coming down to his waist here. There is none. Something that seems again a little uncharacteristic of a masterpiece. Not a deal breaker, but yeah, definitely an issue. The same comes down to his legs here. Uh, that's about it for the side because we have no articulating leg armor. Again, it seems kind of out of the norm for the Masterpiece line. Uh, the actual forward and back is on a nice ratchet and a good range of motion. Uh, the knee itself, of course, a decent ratchet um, due to the bulk. Not a huge range of motion out of it. But enough for somebody as bulky as Ultra Magnus. I mean, you can still make him look like he's running somewhere. Also peculiar is that it looks like he's got a knee cut here. But as far as I can see, that doesn't turn. So you gotta rely on this hip swivel at the top to actually change the foot. Um, not a deal breaker, but again, a little weird. 
Now down at the feet here, we do actually have some die cast in the toe piece here. I can't tell if all of it is, I don't think so. But definitely you can feel this, and there is articulation in this to go ahead and give him a little tilted ankle down there, if you so please. So let's actually get to the comparisons, and here we go. Let's just bring it right out. There's Citizen Stack, and you can see Stack sits uh, probably like a half inch taller overall than MP22. So not a big difference. Now Stack is a very wobbly mess in the legs. Uh, I'm not sure if the V2 fixed that, but he does have overall better articulation. It just needs to be fixed. You can see we can get the arm like this for him. Is that an issue for this one? I'm not really so sure, um, you know, what articulation he has works, and frankly, I don't know if I necessarily see Ultra Magnus as someone who's doing one of those looking down his arm at the gun type thing. I don't know. It would be nice if he could do it, but it doesn't seem necessary. And again, you can see just a little extra detailing. Yes, much more G1. Better looking in the regard of G1 versus, you know, artistic uh, expression. But when it comes to actual, like, little details on the legs, really, I don't think that this little bit of red would have hampered the G1 feel of this magnet. The reason I bring that to your attention is because when you take someone like your MP10 Optimus, where truck mode things bleed into the actual robot, he ends up looking, you know, a lot better looking than Magnus, like a more finished toy, which definitely is not 100% G1 cartoon accurate, but does make what feels like an overall better presentation. That said, the size difference between Magnus and Optimus looks pretty awesome, I have to admit. But let's not stop with Optimus, because we all know that at that time, Rodimus Prime was the actual leader of the Autobots. And that just looks awesome. I mean, you can't deny that. And of course, I have the battle mask face on Bumblebee here, because it feels closest to being a gold bug. And just for other reference, there's your other Masterpiece cars. To change out Ultra Magnus's hands so we can put the Matrix holding hands in, all you do is pop them right off a ball joint and replace them with the appropriate slotted fist. To change his face out here, <clears throat> reveal something a little bit peculiar about this guy. When we pull this off, we get the white Optimus Prime face. What gets me is that they spent budget to pass this thing through twice to get the light blue here of the eyes as well as the silver of the faceplate. Honestly, I can't really understand why this decision was made and why they apparently made this piece out of a die cast metal which means that the ends of this and the whole antenna is actually die cast metal. I don't understand why that decision was made as opposed to giving just a little bit more paint down at the legs. But regardless, once we've got the face off here and see the face we'll never look at, please let me know in the comments if you intend on displaying your Ultra Magnus that way. But we pop this out. It's essentially the same exact way that MP10 works inside, except they didn't put a screw inside and no head crest to kind of hold it in place. So once you get that, you go ahead and you can close that on up. And as we try to recreate that iconic movie scene, we go ahead and we plug the matrix into Ultra Magnus's head and glue it upwards and there we go. We've got Ultra Magnus trying to open the matrix. Admittedly, that's pretty cool. His hands are also sized that they can go ahead and hold any one of the matrixes that have come out at this point. While we're talking matrix, let's talk about one thing that he does way better than Citizen Stack. If you recall correct, that's the matrix compartment that KFC built into Citizen Stack. Ultra Magnus, on the other hand, is a way better matrix compartment. We open this top blue piece here to reveal this, and then carefully we open this, and all this tech detailing and nice, brilliant, dark gunmetal silver paint. There we go. It looks great, and we can take our MP10 matrix and store it right on in there and close it on up. Which does look pretty cool when we have Ultra Magnus in his robot mode as you can see that matrix right through the glass. 
So really, it comes down to whichever one best suits your collection. Both of them are great Ultra Magnuses. This is a much better transformation. The truck looks just a tiny bit better aside from the red bumper, but G1 accuracy. And uh, yeah, I just think personally he looks better with the masterpieces we have. He just could have used some extra details. So this is G2RX6. I will see you guys next week.